Well, good morning and thank you for joining us. This is Andrew Williams Jr. And this morning, I'm, I'm this event is being hosted by the Ed Food Foundation in collaboration with Five Points Youth Foundation. We're focused on um, the ad hoc International Advisory Board of Bill Oil Ambassadors, activists and advocates. We're promoting the sustainable development goals. And in particular, we're supporting the United Nations Global Compact 2021 through 2023 local network strategy. This morning, our guests will be uh, Miriam Khan. She'll be introducing herself and her organizations, <clears throat> the Community Development Foundation in uh, Pakistan, as well as the Global Women's Development Group based here in the United States. And then briefly, she'll tell us about their upcoming event involving agriculture. After that, we'll introduce our other guests so with no further ado, uh, Mary and Khan, I'm going to turn the stage over to you. Uh, thank you so much. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this is Mariam Khan, Executive Director, Community Development Foundation, uh, also heading ahead in Pakistan as a founder and president that Global Women's Development Network. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this, uh, uh, the journey of Community Development Foundation uh, we initiated from 2009 and uh, working here in Pakistan uh, with different partners organization uh, as a registered uh, uh, company uh, under Societies Act here in uh, under Pakistan's law. So now, uh, uh, like uh, starting this journey from 2009, uh, we focused on only one component and this component is women's economic empowerment. All uh, our initiatives are, you know, inter-centered or uh, related to women's economic empowerment and all initiatives, all programs directly or indirectly attached with the economic empowerment and uplifting of women uh, across the globe now. So um, Community Development Foundation having four major initiatives, which are going to be uh, ultimately converting with the passage of time in uh, different um, uh, in, in, a, in a organizations. So number one, uh, our program is uh, Global Women's Development Network. So what is Global Women's Development Network? Global Women's Development Network uh, is basically an idea uh, which we extract from our international conference uh, um, March 2021 when we gather uh, almost 17 plus countries women's leadership just to brainstorm on on the economic empowerment initiatives ideas um, uh, and different uh, components uh, 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 from different uh, women sharing their experiences sharing their exposures and their platforms they came over there and they spent almost six days uh, with us on this conference and after, in, at the end of this conference, every individual want to create this um, initiative on a network. So the network which can, uh, you know, stand for the women, which can, uh, you know, take action for the empowerment of women, which can uplift women's economic, uh, you know, opportunities, and which can raise uh, the voice all over, all over, all across the globe for the women. So all these women are proudly now the member of GWDN network, uh, Women's Development Network, and our upcoming target, which is uh, we are covering under our upcoming conference of 2022, that we are going to invite and we are going to, uh, you know, cater uh, almost 50 plus countries women's leadership, which can come over there and they can share their ideas they can share their platform, they can contribute uh, towards the women's economic empowerment. And we, we are not offering only the platform for the conference. We are offering the platform for the partnerships. We are offering the platform uh, for, for the collective uh, action uh, and contribution uh, from wherever they are residing, whatever they are doing. If they are related to the women empowerment, they can be uh, you know a member or they can be a part of GWD and network. So second major component 
uh, which is the bigger project of Community Development Foundation. Uh, this is Women's Economic Development Initiative Punjab. Uh, this project is also initiated uh, under COVID-19 uh, when, uh, you know, uh, all work offices, uh, you know, were closed all over, all over the world and in Pakistan as well. We also face that every individual, you know, uh, uh, you know, become gathered in, in their homes and they don't have any work to do. So in this uh, scenario and at that time, uh, we announced and we create global, uh, sorry, uh, Women's Economic Empowerment uh, Ready Program. So in this Ready Program, uh, we this is the first virtual mega platform here in Pakistan in which we gather almost more than 300 human resources all over Pakistan. And they, you know, they joined us. We trained them, we built their capacity uh, in terms of IT, ICT, business entrepreneurship, or different other skill courses to just, uh, you know, take action uh, and uh, just to continue their work, which they, you know, uh, finished uh, during the COVID-19 situation uh, regarding their jobs. So now at that time, Reddip is almost, uh, you know, having the age of uh, one year, uh, more than one year now. And uh, we declared already that we are going to uh, practically execute if COVID allows us. So now we are going to practically execute our program. Reddip um, program is women focused program under different 10 sectors. So all these sectors are uh, business, entrepreneurship, IT and ICTs, health and well-being, uh, food and agriculture, uh, safety and security, uh, media, electronic and print media, and uh, you know uh, other one or two other programs as well, uh, which we are going to you know open one by one with different initiatives and with with different programs as well. So IT, ICT, uh, and the e-commerce courses are the majorly uh, focused program of CDF. And because we are taking all these grassroots women on digitalization, we are taking them on digitalization. Not, no, there is, you know, there is no specific criteria that uh, they must be having a bigger business. No, if they are having a small business, they are medium business, they are startups and just, you know, they, they want to just take a start from our programs, all of they are welcome. So this program is uh, like um, uh, where the commercial kitchen gardening program is going to be initiate or open as a pilot phase in 10 district of Punjab from 3rd July uh, to 6th July. So in this, in this, we are going to cover in our first uh, uh, field visit, we are going practically all our senior experts, including myself, are going practically on the grassroots fields. And you can so you know you can see our picture. And I'm I'm uh, Sir Andrew Willem. I'm in uh, planning uh, with uh, with one or uh, two TV channels here, which are uh, going to going with us as a media team. We are also focusing to make videos of this program, and we will share with you. Uh, uh, these videos, these programs, we are going to capture these programs just to show the model of the program. So this program is based on two major component. First component is for the commercial kitchen gardening. And this commercial kitchen gardening was sponsored by Seeds of Hope from Philippines, uh, one of the organization which uh, Sir Lloyd, uh, you know, introduced this organization to Community Development Foundation. And then they sent and they sponsored the seeds of this um, uh, initiative. And the second component of this program is, um, you know, production of organic uh, items for the youth, especially uh, now the summer vacations here in Pakistan is starting from July. So we have the students, uh, you know, starting from the grade 10th, 11th and 12th. They, they are going to be free for, up, up, you know, coming three months. So we are taking all these students with us. They are learning uh, by our expert, uh, the organic production of different items, beauty items, different um, food items, different fabric items. 
so they are not only go going to learn this how to produce they are also going to learn this that um, how can they sell this product uh, via online or via different other uh, you know e-commerce platform which are introducing uh, the successful uh, online businesses for the women so this project uh, this initiative is basically based on two uh, major components so this is one of the sector which is going to be initiated from july and we are already uh, you know activate our business entrepreneurship uh, center with different international organizations as well or even here in pakistan uh, we are we are uh, you know already partner of different uh, uh, universities civil society organizations uh, which are working on uh, you know women's component so um, um, uh, we are very much open uh, and uh, if you want to join this program even i can create the zoom link at, at that time when we you know um, uh, start this activity when people join us how can female are coming over there what is the model of this program and uh, like uh, what is the procedure of the whole program so everyone can even join on the through uh, zoom link if you people want so this is all from uh, our side and uh, the two other major initiative which is the uh, you know uh, uh, the future um, uh, plans of the community development foundation although these are the registered initiatives so one is the school of rural uh, women pioneership so in these these schools and in in this initiative the rural women practically uh, and professionally learn the entrepreneurship and they learn uh, uh, learning by doing learning by action so they will learn over there they will they do action uh, they they did, they are going to you know settle the practical work as well along with the theory or uh, you know other uh, uh, modes of uh, different education so sir lloyd all, always uh, you know support very much about the learning by doing so we are also focusing a uh, school of rural entrepreneurship that uh, grassroots women are going to be uh, join this uh, school as a classrooms they spend over there two three hours of their uh, evening or mornings whatever the suitable time for them they they can come over there they can learn and similar are uh, the fourth uh, initiative the sustainable development goals academy for the grassroots so uh, the youth uh, even the the children adults or even the bigger age uh, persons can come over there they can learn about sustainable development goals they or all these sustainable development goals they can you know uh, practice on our projects like if we are going to do uh, uh, agriculture activity so which sustainable development goal will be attached with this uh, activity so this is the practical example for our grassroots uh, community or uh, students or the community members or different organizations so uh, these are the four major initiatives which are ultimately going to be independent organization with the passage of time but right now this is recognized uh, a bigger initiatives of community development foundation here in pakistan and we are connecting this initiative internationally now through global women's development network or through different uh, other partnerships offered from uh, you know Uh, different companies or supported by Sir Lloyd or Sir William. Um, I'm really very much thankful of all my seniors, uh, especially both of these, uh, always uh, very much concerned and supportive uh, towards our initiatives. So thank you so much. And if you have any question, I'm here to answer for you. Well, thank you very much, Miriam. Also in the chat, <clears throat> if you could type in your contact information. And the, and the websites for any of these organizations so that we could follow up. Also, I'm going to put into the chat the link to the Facebook share or where we're sharing on Facebook. <clears throat> and if you choose, you can also uh, make sure you let people know on Facebook how to reach you because this is a very important initiative, not just for yourself and not just for Pakistan, but for the entire world. As you mentioned, the uh, COVID-19 is caused a major change in the way we do business around the world, but also we found ways that we can expand our power, 
our local rural communities by involving others in the in the um, in the country, but also engage with people around the world. So this is a very important um, <clears throat> demonstration of global partnerships for development. And that's one of the key descriptions of the uh, United Nations Global Compacts collaboration with the Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, as I said to you, all of our efforts are now intended on raising awareness about how there is an existing framework that we can use to empower people around the world to truly leave no one behind. Um, now, just as a brief background here, the sustainable, the sustainable Development Goals, they were launched in 2015 alongside the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. But this was just actually phase two of a thousand year plan. Originally in 2000, the world came together and launched the Millennium Development Goals. Now, while I, I do not condone, agree with, or support all of the activities of the United Nations, I do recognize them as the largest organization around the world that connects together major countries. So it was Kofi Annan, who himself was the first Secretary General from what's called Sub-Saharan Africa. He was in the role of United Nations Secretary General when the uh, Millennium Development Goals were launched. He was also the founder of the United Nations Global Compact at the same time. In fact, it was 1999 as a, an outcome of the um, Durban meeting about providing a debt jubilee to the poorer nations of the world that unfortunately did not succeed that preceded the launch of the Millennium Development Goals as a way for the entire world to address the major problems on earth, including number one, ending poverty. There were orig originally eight Millennium Development Goals with the first being ending poverty and the last being global partnerships. When the transition occurred to the post-millennium agenda, those first and last goals are still in place. So goal number one is ending poverty in all its forms. And the last goal, 17, is creating global partnerships for development. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to allow our guests, our current guests, to introduce themselves. And if you'd be so kind, sir, from South Africa, if you would take the floor and introduce yourself and also introduce your own project, if you so choose. Now is that time. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone streaming in. Um, my name is Craig Tidwe, all the way from South Africa and the Gauteng region. And uh, our project right now, um, maybe briefly to give a uh, summary of what we're busy with. Uh, our farm is called La Fakong, uh, which means the health of health. We have an organic farm uh, where we deal with and specialize with Moringa production, uh, grown organically. So we use the leaves, uh, the roots, the branches, the whole tree to just produce um, products um, your tea bags, your health salts, um, the powder itself. We also have a cosmetic range that we're working towards. And to give back to the community, we just um, have a small garden that we have people come in and give them uh, advice on how to farm and how to really just get into agriculture because everyone still has the perception that agriculture is something that's backward or something that doesn't have monetary value or it's just something of the old age. So just want to be involved uh, the whole community on how everything is run from uh, the side of planting. We also have an agro-processing side where we process uh, our goods and we usually 
have the powder uh, made from moringa. We also mill it. We use, okay, to just break down what we use the moringa for, the leaves, we use it for powder. We will make the tea bags. The branches, the twigs, the stem, we use it for uh, the feed, animal feed. The roots, um, we use it, not the whole root, but a certain part of the root. We extract it, uh, mill it down, which is used for male libido. And uh, that's basically the whole Moringa tree, um, just to give um, a little bit knowledge uh, about Moringa olifera. So that's in brief, in a nutshell, what we are currently doing uh, in South Africa. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Andrew. Oh, you're very welcome. Can you tell us a little bit more about how long this project has been going on and how many people are involved, please? So the project has been going on for slightly over five years. We have partnered up with the government um, whereby they lend us 15 of the workers uh, in the Department of Agriculture. And we also partnered up with the local uh, um, group of workers that just come in uh, that are based from the local community that are 20. So all in all, we have 35 people that are on the farm every day that just uh, work the farm, help us with the whole value chain and harvesting and the processing and the packaging, the whole line of work that we do is done by all these uh, 35 people, including uh, myself and some few colleagues of mine. So all in all, I could say we are nothing more than 50 that uh, were working down this project. Of, of the thank you of the 50 people are any of them women or youth or all these are all the what is the composition of the people that are working on this project? So from the 50 people, we base the majority as women and youth because that's our main target and the people that we see that need more empowerment. So out of that 50, I would say that they're okay. There are only five males that are over 35. The rest, I would say it's 25 women and the remaining are youth under the age of 30. So overall there's more women and youth than um, I guess our male counterparts. Excellent. Well, hopefully we can find a way to connect um, what, oh, that's the other question. <clears throat> are your products distributed and sold just locally in your own area or please tell us about the outcome of your of your growth process so our products uh, so far are just sold i would say in south africa and i uh, would say a little bit in the neighboring countries in the sub-sahara area so Zimbabwe and a little bit in Lesotho and Mozambique, but uh, most of our customers are in South Africa. So um, can just repeat the second part of the question? Well, I guess that was actually, you, did, you answered it. The question was whether the products are sold just locally in South Africa or in the community or um, a wider area. So you do, it seems, have sales in countries outside of South Africa. Have you found 
there to be any change so far in your ability to uh, distribute your products as a result of the African continental free trade area? Or does that have anything to do with your own operation? Uh, it has a lot more to do with our own operation. Well, the free trade uh, doesn't really open much doors uh, with our farm, but it's just our own effort just trying to get uh, our products out of the country because then we feel that Moringa has a lot of potential and it helps a lot of people with all types of sickness and ailments. So um, it's just been our own effort. Great. Well, I, I noticed you put some information in the chat. Uh, do you guys have a, a, a social media presence at all? Or are you just dealing directly with people on the ground hand to hand? Um, so we have quite a couple of pages. We have a Facebook page at La Facon. I'll just write it down at the chat box. We have a website uh, also and an Instagram page, which will obviously when you go to the website, you'll get all the details too. Excellent, excellent. Now, are you, are you at your computer or at a phone? Is it possible for you to, to share your screen, to share it with us or not? Um, at my computer right now. So is it possible for you to share your screen and share with us your any uh, pages or photos or anything that could help our audience get a better idea, a visual idea of what it is you're doing? Um, let me send up by the website maybe, so it maybe can get an idea of how everything is. Yes, that's helpful. Just to let you know, <clears throat> this is a weekly um, webinar. We've been doing this for quite some time now. Uh, we're streaming it to Facebook. We have a group there called the Encounter Think Tank. And right now it's branded as the Ayakba Network Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Global Ambassadors. However, we are uh, intending to engage our members there with projects like yours, wherever we can find ways that we can work and network with you. So uh, this is being streamed now. The intent is for us to also download this and be able in the future to broadcast this through the Revelation Network, TRN.TV, and Universal Citizens Media Network, UCI.T.TV, so that what we're doing in our small group can have a worldwide impact. So we really do appreciate your sharing it with us today, but I'd like for you to think about planning in advance, maybe next week or some week upcoming, um, uh, perhaps a 10 or 20 minute presentation that we can use and then share with people around the world. All right, uh, I'll definitely do it. So um, let me just share my screen and um, we'll go through the website. Thank you. So, right. So here is our website, Lafakong Moringa. And everything is organic and natural. So the plant base, we also use the seeds, the Moringa seeds, where you can see the pods right at the background where we use the oil just to treat um, your wounds. Maybe if you are like a, like a first degree burn, you can use to treat your wounds. And some few days later, uh, you see the results. So nutritionally, chronic diseases, it has a lot of antioxidants, uh, weight loss. It's just, I'd like to call it a um, uh, wonder, like, I would say maybe a, a herb from the Garden of Eden, if you should. So we have our health sorts, uh, the leaf powder, the Moringa tea. And um, we also have our own specialized Moringa gin, which has um, spices and a touch of Moringa powder uh, to give it its own 
unique taste. And then we have our capsules, which are basically just the Moringa powder. And um, our health salts are actually Himalayan salts or combined with the Moringa uh, leaves and a bit of chilies just to give it an extra taste. And um, right down at the bottom, we have where we are on a map. And um, we have a program where if somebody wants to join us at the farm, just to see how everything goes, um, just to understand um, anything about farming or farming with uh, Moringa, they can just send through their resume and join us and be part of the family. So we can just expand and have a, a base of Moringa farmers. And um, this is just a testimonial from one of our users, uh, Charlotte. And uh, Poppy at uh, right at the end. So um, I don't know if this will be like sufficient enough, but just to give an idea of uh, what we're busy with the side, that's just the capsules, the powder, the tea, the oil, the seeds, and everything is certified organic. And we just, this previous month, just got our certifications from the uh, probably South African agency, whereby we are now certified to put it on the market, um, such as uh, retail shops, and just to get a market uh, broadly in the whole country. So um, this is just briefly what's really happening at Le Fakon. Excellent, excellent. So in the chat, <clears throat> I've also put the link, as I said, to the Facebook page. If you could be so kind, uh, if you could also click that link when you have opportunity and post your website and contact information there, that will be the best way for you to reach the audience that we have. Uh, just to give you a little background there, it was in 2014 when I was elected president of Five Points Youth Foundation that I joined the United Nations Global Compact. But years before that, I had been a member of the Encounter Think Tank here in Los Angeles. That was um, the Los Angeles Trade Technical College, Environmental and, um, I'm sorry, Architectural and Environmental Design Department. The Professor Marcella Oliva, she formed a community think tank and advisory board. So when I, that was in 2000, I think 13. So in 2014, when I joined the United Nations Global Compact as president of Five Points, I launched this Facebook page with just those people that were interested in trying to address what I call regenerative development solutions. As you may know, sustainability is focused on um, not doing harm for future generations. But unfortunately, because of the climate chaos and other changes, in my personal opinion, we have to go beyond just sustaining a decline, which will only result in fatality. We must focus on regenerative design, which in fact treats the entire world and nature, along with human beings and all species, as one family of people and one family of units. So the Encounter Think Tank began with just a handful. Now we have over 1,700 members. So Kira uh, Tilwick, what we hope to do is begin to engage those people with projects like yours. It's very important you mentioned that now the South African government has validated your, your product to go, go to market, so to speak. And I'd like to talk to you about ways that I here in Los Angeles in the United States can perhaps work and assist you because here the administration has an ongoing project called USAID <clears throat> that's focused on delivering um, business opportunities to people in other countries to do business with us here in the United States. But that's only one of 17 different projects all under the umbrella of Prosper Africa. So the idea is that we here in the United States can engage with you there in South Africa. Particularly, I like for you to think about your country people, those that are from South Africa that are now residing in the United States or residing in other countries 
because as I understand it, you also have a diaspora commission of your government and they're charged with connecting resources throughout the world from the diaspora and expatriates from South Africa with people back home. So here in Los Angeles, my intent is to connect those dots, not just between Africa and the USA, but also between Asia and Africa using, using this place, Los Angeles, as a bridge between those two. So the online platform right now, the Encounter Think Tank, is that place where we're allowing people to connect together and make plans going to the future together. So thank you very much for your presentation and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, um, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm gonna also type in here um, my email address if you'd be so kind as to follow up with an email to me, then we can connect together here and also on WhatsApp to uh, make plans going forward. Just as you heard Miriam sharing with you a plan about what they're doing, not just for now, but also for throughout the year and even for the future, I would very much like for you to think about sharing your, uh, your business plan or your long-term project with me because it's only through that way that we can begin to plan for the future and take advantage of what is now known as the first 10 year implementation plan of the African Union's Agenda 2063, which will run through from 2014 through 2023. But also, again, as I mentioned to you, we have a particular interest over the next two and a half years to really drive what's called the local networks of the Sustainable Development Goals of the uh, United Nations Global Compact. Just to give you a little background about that, um, the when the United Nations Global Compact was first announced by Kofi Annan back in 1999 at the World Economic Forum, there were only 44 corporations that were sitting at the table. And the intent, because of his lived experience, was to hold corporations and businesses accountable for the adverse impacts that they were having around the world. They developed a set of three major objectives. One, to focus on human rights, two, labor, and three, environment. Later, they added a fourth component, which is anti-corruption and transparency. So unlike uh, the United Nations itself, which had has now had two more successors, Jacobi Annan, and unlike the governments of the world, like for example, here in the United States, we've had several presidents from then until now. But the United Nations Global Compact was blessed with having the leadership and guidance and continuity of only one leader from 2000 to 2015. His name was George Kell out of Germany. From 2015 to 2020, um, Lisa Kingo from Denmark stepped in as CEO. Only last year, we now have an African at the head of that organization from Kenya. And it's her task to drive us forward, as I said, for the next, from 2021 through 2023, with a strategy to expand the local networks. Now in South Africa, there is in fact, a United Nations Global Compact local network, as there is in Pakistan, as there is in Canada, the United States. But the challenge is that if you look at a map of the world, you'll see that those places where they're the least number of global compact networks are those places that are most affected by adverse climate change. So our objective is to empower the people on the ground, like yourselves, to be able to identify ways that what you're doing has a positive impact and attract sponsorship and support for you from people around the world who must spend trillions of dollars to address these issues over the next few years. Unfortunately, they can't know about you and you can't know about them unless we have a common place where we connect. So that's the intent of this effort that I'm undertaking today. So again, Ken Tillery, thank you so very much for joining us and Mariam Khan, Thank you so very much for joining us as well. Sir, uh, sir I want to add a few words uh, at the end of the meeting uh, that we have very good presence in South Africa. You know, uh, our uh, goodwill ambassador, Princess Happy, is also from over there. And so many other very, very good partners and very powerful partners, like Circle of Global Business Women and so many other 
uh, organizations and individuals are the partners. So I would like to invite uh, uh, our uh, guest uh, uh, for the conference as well, and also for the partnership in GWDN as well. So uh, I will share the uh, membership form of GWDN with him. Uh, they can fulfill this form and uh, send back to me. And we can, you know, uh, as per our set criteria, uh, this is our invitation for um, this organization as well. They can join us in GWDN and also they can join uh, in the conference, in upcoming conference as well. So uh, I want to add this, uh, like this is invitation uh, from uh, our side as a founder and president that we have already good present, uh, uh, you know, presence in South Africa, and we will be lucky if you also join us with your expertise, which you explain on uh, on this meeting today. This is quite relevant to our work as well, and also the agenda of GWDN. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely. I would love to be part of the initiative and just help uh, move the world towards the right direction and uh, be part of a global network. So um, I'd very, very be uh, proud to be part of your, uh, the, the, the initiative. Thank you. Now, Thank you, you can, of course, <clears throat> in the chat, if you click on the, the link at the bottom right-hand side of the chat, it says file. And there, if you can download and save the chat, then you can be able to have in your records a way to contact and communicate with us. And believe it or not, after all this time, now the video is ready to play. <laughs> 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 so uh, please bear with me. I'm going to see if I can share this video because it does address the 17 sustainable development goals. And the idea, unfortunately, is that for example, there was a meeting of, of major um, governmental. Oh, just one. Now it won't stop now that I started it. <laughs> but wait just a moment here. I may, or, I may or may not be able to stop it. Okay, yes. So there was a meeting of, in Ghana of their top governmental officials <clears throat> and only 25% of them even knew what the sustainable development goals were. So you can imagine that on the ground for the people, particularly in rural areas and, and also even in urban areas, if they don't know what it is, then they cannot take advantage of the resources that are available. So that's part of my objective is to find ways we can use the same common language and frameworks to share with each other. Uh, I think the smart thing for me to do is to copy and paste into the chat the link that I'm of this video I'm trying to show you. That will give you a little bit better idea of what uh, what the world uh, is is the, the the game plan for the world. But it's important that we engage our youth as well with these issues as well. Uh, for example, now with you, get uh, a all of the elements that you mentioned, <clears throat> they address more than one of the 17 sustainable development goals. For example, um, it doesn't just deal with uh, growing food and growing, um, uh, growing, growing um, solutions that help heal, which again, number one is in poverty, number two is in hunger, number three is good health and well-being. So actually what you're doing has a major impact on multiple of those goals. The better able you are, to include on your website, which of those sustainable development goals that you're dealing with, the better able you can attract other resources that are dedicated to providing solutions. And also like Miriam, that are also working in the same areas. So let me try to share this one more time with you, but the 17 sustainable development goals, I put the link there into your chat. So I'm gonna begin sharing now, just a moment. is an organization with goals of peace and sustainable development around the world. 
Their mission is huge, but we're breaking it down in two minutes. 17 sustainable development goals. Let's get it to them, because the more you know, look, in some corners of the world today, people are. Well, third time is supposed to be the charm, but it's not. So with that, I'm going to call it a wrap to today's event. I thank you so very much. We've been here about an hour now. We can, in advance, plan for longer presentations. But due to technical difficulties today, I'm going to wrap this up. And I'm so glad that both of you were able to attend. And let's follow up with ways in WhatsApp and email and others to find ways to work in that work together. So again, this is Andrew Williams, Jr. I thank you for joining us today. And I think we've had a very impactful collaboration today, which is another example of sustainable development goal number 17, global partnerships for development. Now's the time for thank any closing so thoughts. Head. You're very welcome. Do, do, do. Um, Mr. Andrew, I'm just trying to post my contact and website information to the group uh, um, Facebook live stream and I just have to be accepted to the group so that I can post the comment there. Yes, please, please go ahead. Uh, I hear, I heard you say you're trying to pay your contact. I do see www.leftleftcornerforming.com, but yes, you can put your your email address if you'd like us to contact you. That would be very good. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll download this now. Miriam, if you want, in the ch chat, he's put his email address. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll download this now. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir, I'll, I can put it over there. Also, uh, we also have a, a WhatsApp groups where we're working together. And I think you might've found out about us there. So I see you've added your WhatsApp group, fine. So I'll connect us together and invite you to our groups and feel free to connect us with um, any of your contacts that you think is important for us to begin to work with. Sure, sure. sure. All right, uh, will do. All right, thank you so much. We're gonna wrap this up today. Have a fantastic day, everyone.